Hey man, we in the middle of the storm, bro. Even like being out here, I feel like I get to feel God's power. Like, dang, we so big. Especially whenever all the lights turn out on the road. You're like, bro, I don't even know where we going at this point. To be honest, y'all, we can't even see right now. That's the journey. Yeah. I'm about to step in the ring for the fight of my life Hit my knees and I strap on my gloves Boy, I've been prepping since Most of y'all know Hobie, but y'all know Christopher, man I grew up in Brunswick, Georgia Nah, man, shout out to Brunswick Wouldn't be where I am without the week We didn't make much money I remember my mom, back when we were living in a trailer in Brunswick She didn't have no soap And so she literally prayed to God for some soap and then soap showed up in the mailbox. So, I mean, it was like a life of faith. My parents took me to church every week and I actually enjoyed it. You know, I think what I really liked about it was we had snacks. They were just always busting every time. So getting some goldfish on a Sunday, you can't beat that. You know what I mean? So for me, it was just fun. You know what I mean? Like being with my friends and stuff. I picked up a lot of the things they were teaching me, like about Jesus dying for me. I didn't have much of a scope, I guess, of what that like really meant for my life, but like, when I was four, I mean, I accepted him in my heart, but it did take some time for me to develop a deep relationship with God. In high school, I went on a mission trip and I saw things that I can't say I didn't see. Uh, I saw a woman healed in the gas station in the name of Jesus. Uh, I saw a man with six infused vertebrae healed. I saw like, not even just that, but I saw people's hearts getting touched. It was like every day. When I got home, it was just like, man, like, what are we doing? Like we're, not like, we're not living a life that's showing God's power. We're up here doing all of this and talking about, man, accept Jesus and as your Lord and Savior, you're at a job. It's like, man, are we loving each other? After this trip, I started just seeking him, like just on fire, trying to do what I thought was best. But I think still there's a lot of inner healing that, that I didn't fully experience. You know what I mean? Even at school, I, I had a lot of judgmental tendencies. My friend like felt judged by me, bro. Like, I basically told that man that he was going to hell when I was in high school. I mean, I was my best friend. I had conviction, but I wasn't carrying discernment. There was definitely like, a pressure that I could not do the things that uh, people around me were doing. Like, I can't drink, I can't smoke, I can't have sex, I can't do this. I was so adamant about that. It got hard, I think, when they went to the parties and I didn't. When, like, when I wouldn't get invited to that stuff, you know what I mean? I just felt like I didn't fully belong. Ninth grade kids and we're starving for love. I think I wanted to fit in deep down. Cause keep in mind, I'm making music at the time. I want to pop, like in my high school, I want people to, to think what I'm doing is amazing. And I mean, I had to literally go back and ask people for forgiveness from that time period. I think I was the Pharisee. Cause at the end of the day, I was still lusting on girls in my heart, and I still had bad intentions. Who am I to judge? Cause you're not the only one. In college, people were doing the same things. But, I don't know how, but my whole approach was different. Like, I would just be there for them. And I'm like, man, I never would do that in high school. This time, it was like, man, let me tell you. I could express my relationship with them you know, and express how close he is to me. So it's like, man, to think that God kind of helped me become a caretaker instead of a judgment giver was just pretty cool, bro. Tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like how you gonna live as a Christian? Like how you gonna live out a mission? Like how you gonna roll through the city and pray for the homeless but not for the wicked? Hip hop culture just, it became something that I felt like I belonged in. I started to freestyle and battle rap, and I was good. Like I, like I was beating people all the time. What's your I name? I know my shorty, she pretty. I ride through the city, I'm feeling like Diddy. I told him I'm back in the cut like a Maverick. Luka Doncic, where I'm scoring. Uh, left hand, the way I'm scorching. Say this is for me, I admit. Uh -huh. So I started 
dropping music on SoundCloud. I'd like make my own songs and make my own beats. I got equipment for Christmas. Me and this girl that I dated for a couple weeks went through a breakup. I made a song about it. It did really good on my campus. I was this moment where God was like, yo, basically what he told me was delete all your music. Everything you have on SoundCloud, delete it. And I was like, dang. My heart just wanted him more than it wanted music. And so I deleted it. But over time, bro, I just started creating from the spirit. That surrender and like really trusting the spirit like led to some beautiful things, man. I, mean, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for those steps. Holy Spirit come into my life. Won't you wrap me up inside your life? I was building with Ace, the A&R at Reach Records at the time, and I just felt like I didn't know what was gonna happen. I was like, is Reach gonna sign me? Nothing was guaranteed. He brought me up to Atlanta to come and visit Reach and all that. But then right before I moved, he literally cut off what we had going. He was like, yeah, bro, I just don't think I have time to develop an artist. I remember hearing the Lord speak to me and he said, you will be my missionary to the four corners of the earth. And then I, and then I started to search that out. Like, man, what does this even mean? And so like, bro, like YWAM came to my school and I'm like talking to them, like, man, maybe this is it. You know what I mean? Like, that wasn't it. You know what I mean? And so bro, like the Lord just led me to Atlanta. And here I was, I live living with my cousin, bagging groceries at Publix, trying to fund what I was doing with the music. And I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew that, you know, God had me. It helped fix my perspective of like, man, wherever I'm at, I'm a son. Ended up signing with Reach. You wanna know Christopher, you gotta see both sides. Hey, yeah, I felt empty when I was signing with Reach. I was like, first week, bro, I felt alone. You know, as a new artist, it's just hard when you first come on somewhere because you're trying to figure out your place. I remember sitting in the studio, not knowing what the heck I was gonna do. And it was exciting, but it wasn't like what I thought it would be. Like, I thought I was gonna step into a family. I had a hard time building relationships with people. Like where the love go? Like where the love go? And over time, my like God really, really did his thing with that. Now it's looking like, man, we support each other. And the reality is it's always been family. And I'm just now learning what that looks like. And that's not perfect. Shout out to Pat, all of the ones that's watching my back. Where the love go? Where the wow. love go? Like where the love go? Like where I feel like I'm not even worthy to come over there. So stupid. What's good? Wow, what's up, man? How you been? Pandemic, don't touch me. Psych. <laughs> it's, like, no, it's a fake <laughs> greeting. I met this man two times before this. It's today. I'm gonna do something really documentary -ish. Man, the album, bro. I'm trying to turn it in. I don't know what to do. I feel like everything I've been doing, I just been crashing. I realize that all I know is that I don't. I'm excited for people to hear the album, hear Christopher, and just get to experience my freedom through song. Maybe even experience that freedom for themselves, not because of the song, but because of the spirit. And most of my songs, like, I can't even escape him being in me. Like, there's times where I'll be like, dang, man, is this song even of God? And somebody would be like, man, bro, that song, like, touched me, bro. I can't even try to do something out of him. He's in me. Like he's gonna shine through me. you could say the water all around him I seen people hearts get hard. I want people to know him personally. I want to give people an opportunity to. If you truly believe that like God loves you, if you truly believe that he died for you and realize that you're involved in that story, you'll find freedom. It won't look like anxiety and stress. Uh, the things will come up, but like it'll look different be a life of peace and love and joy. And now and I'm still learning that for myself. Like I said, it's a process. I know that I'm a Christ bearer and I know I have a purpose in him. If it's gonna be me and you, then it's we against the world. Stop. <laughs> hey, this is Hovi and you're watching This Is Me TV. This intro, man. Yeah. I feel like God just gave it to us without us even trying. Without us trying. And so I feel like God just kind of like. Like our whole album. <laughs> yeah, really. Let's play this right, man. Yeah.